Uh, we have a report from uh, Wapakoneta, Ohio, where Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Armstrong uh, uh, watched the uh, launch. Mrs. Armstrong told newsmen she talked to her son this morning just before the launch. He was happy, his usual self, just like he always is. As the astronaut's parents spoke, one of the spacemen in the capsule told Mission Control, it sure is clear down there. It's like sitting in your own living room. These are cool test pilots, as we have said. They have not uh, been very talkative up there as yet. Uh, there isn't a great deal to talk about. They're reporting out uh, the readings on their many, many dials and how it all is going, which is, of course, of the great uh, utmost importance to the Manned Space Center as they test the systems and are sure that they are ready for the next go, no-go decision, which is the decision to fire the S-4B third stage and start them on the way. Uh, in a way, there's sort of an indication here to those of us who are professional newsmen of the awesome nature of uh, this uh, flight this morning and a kind of an in story I suppose you'd say but uh, down in our CBS uh, Space Center newsroom which is right below me here in this our CBS News Space Center at uh, Merritt Island uh, by the uh, launch complex uh, three minutes before this launch this morning both the Associated Press and United Press International Machines clattered to a stop, and not another word was transmitted on those machines which carry news from all around the world, of course, on the main trunk wires of the AP and the UP. Nothing came along again until after the liftoff of Apollo 11. It seemed that the whole world probably uh, stopped uh, its heart in its mouth to wait to this historic moment as man uh, set out uh, on the great adventure, the adventure to escape from his own planet and to set foot on a distant one. Distant in Earth miles from the launch uh, was a man who, uh, when he was vice president under President Johnson, uh, had a great deal to do with our space program as chairman of the Space Council, and that was Vice President Humphrey. Uh, he is in Moscow today, and uh, he is quoted from Moscow as saying that uh, all the Russians he's talked to, hundreds, he says, in the past week, uh, seem to have no sense of having lost a race uh, to the moon uh, to the Americans but rather a uh, feeling that uh, there has been a contribution now to the understanding of the need for international cooperation in space, a uh, sentiment that was expressed to us just a moment ago by the present Vice President of the United States, uh, Vice President Spiro Agnew. And speaking of uh, Vice Presidents, uh, past and present, and uh, uh, even more than that, of former Presidents of the United States, I'm delighted to have with us as my guest, former President Lyndon Baines Johnson. Good to see you, sir. Could we put a microphone on you here, sir? I uh, greeted you before we were able to get that uh, attached up there. There we are. I think you're wired for sound now, sir. Thank you, Walter. You, uh, you said yesterday at uh, lunch, uh, Mr. President, that uh, you had flown along on every one of these missions, uh, but those you watched uh, on your television monitor at the White House, and this one you saw for the first time in person, Awesome sight, wasn't it, sir? Certainly was, Walter. It's a great thrill. Uh, I had the feeling that great concern for the outcome of this flight. We haven't reached the end. It's just the beginning. And it's been a long time uh, in going as far as we have. The decision was actually taken 12 or 13 years ago uh, that made possible uh, that awesome sight this morning when President Eisenhower put an extra $100 million in a very tight budget back in 1958. But uh, you never get the feeling uh, on one of these blast-offs uh, sitting in a room watching them on the camera that you get to seeing them in person and as uh, they took off there this morning I thought about how fortunate we've been all these years to have had a minimum of accident and I know that all of our people are going to have great concern until this flight is finished another reaction I had was this awesome sight and as uh, they started to lift off it just seemed like a, a half a million people who'd worked on this program through the years each of them were there lifting just their all and trying to 
see that uh, great power uh, going to the skies. And another thought I had was, if we can do all of that in such a short time, I wonder why it is that uh, we can't uh, put that same effort to bring good and peace to all the world. I thought uh, as we went in the sky there this morning of the Space Act itself and its declaration uh, that we were engaged in this endeavor to bring peace to mankind. And uh, I don't believe there's a single thing that our country does, our government does, our people uh, that uh, has greater potential for peace than the space effort. As I walked out uh, from the blast off, I saw that special section of ambassadors there from all the nations of the world, all taking such great pride in America's effort, all entertaining such great hope for the success of uh, this mission. And I recall that uh, after Apollo 8, uh, uh, I sent to, to the leaders of the world a picture of the Earth taken from that mission. And the response was universally favorable and hopeful, and they all express great admiration for our people. You know, when, I, when you conducted the search for the first head of the Space Agency, the National Aeronautics and Space Agency, uh, as the leader in the Senate and later as the Vice President, and you found, came up with James Webb as the head of that agency, the man who put this tremendous management team together, marshaled all these forces, these half a million people who had to work in plants all over the country, the, the cable made in Vermont, the beta cloth made in Massachusetts, the things in Kansas City, and right, right on across the country. Every state contributed something. Uh, Mr. Webb has said since then that he thinks that this is one of the great spin-offs of this program, is the management techniques, the systems engineering that made this thing possible. And he'd like to see that sort of systems engineering and management applied to jobs like peace. Uh, have, uh, have you talked that over with him and thought how that might be done? We talk about if we can spend $24 billion, we can do any to get to the moon, we can then do anything. Well, how do we translate that into action and do anything? Mr. Webb just returned from a trip abroad, and he was telling me of the many statements uh, that he heard from heads of state about our peace program and the potentialities that it offered uh, uh, in that field. Uh, I was always told that... Uh, you ought to, in selecting a manager for an operation, pick the best man you could, give him the implements he needs, tell him what his objective is, and then let him get the job done. That's what President Kennedy did uh, in the space effort uh, back in 61 when he made this commitment of this country and asked the Congress to join in that commitment. We had. Uh, President Kennedy had already appointed Mr. Webb uh, to direct it. Then he gave him the objective, and we're on our way today to realizing that objective. We must have uh, other objectives. Uh, this peace effort is, uh, is the principal one, I think, in the hearts of every human being in the world. All three billion of them can't understand why we have to go on dying and fighting. Uh, uh, when we can do so many wonderful things, why it is we can't learn to get along with each other. And it may be that under the leadership of the cream of our young manhood in the space effort, and the President of the United States and the leaders of the, the space field, that we can bring about a joint effort of some kind. Uh, back in 58, I urged President Eisenhower to say to the other nations of the world, let's all join in a united uh, space program. Uh, we've been unable up to now to get other nations to agree, but President Nixon and uh, the administration very shortly will be engaged in the discussions and negotiations with other leaders. And it may be that uh, more will come out of this than we know now. Well, it's uh, certainly something we can rest our hopes in, even as we rest our hopes in those three men aboard Apollo 11. Well, as we walked away this morning, I thought of three things that uh, I felt very deeply. Concern for the men and their safety, the 
great awe for what I had just seen uh, as they took off. And uh, something you don't hear much about these days, but great pride in this country and its ability to set aside partisanship and differences and quarreling among its scientists and among its industry leaders and its government leaders. If there's been any of that, I, it's, it's been held to a minimum, and I know very little. But if our industrial people, these great managers of industry, if the laboring people of the country, the government, the scientists, all with the help of the Congress can get together and do a job like this, uh, there's just not anything we can't do. And there's so much that we have yet to do with the hunger in the world, with the sickness in the world, with the poverty in the world. We must apply some of the great talents that we've applied to space to all these problems.